guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and today we're going to be looking at the Fortune Deck of Fate events that has just gone live. It contains some Festival Titan points, but not as much as I originally thought. It's only got about 150 points in here. So this is one of those events where you need to make a decision whether or not you want to commit to it. Now, this one is going to be based on summoning champions and also leveling up the champion so essentially it's champion ch training and summon rush now there's been some question marks uh been made to me about you know prism shards will that work will summon in champions you only get points for summoning the shards so therefore even though i've got two prism shards over here you can see i haven't i haven't summoned them yet these will not count towards the deck of fate events because it has to be one of the traditional shards to make this work now there is no guaranteed champions there's no souls there's nothing specifically like exclusive about this event it is just a collection of mythical and six star legendary gear which i personally find these events super underwhelming when they do this because they don't really give you enough to warrant the investment okay there's two legendary books available pretty good there's a mythical tome i would say it's okay but not like super crazy because most people don't have enough mythical champions to really justify going and chasing mythical books like i've already got mikage i've booked mikage and i am also sitting on eight mythical tomes so as much as they are exclusive i don't think people are super like they'd be much more wanting these two legendary books right these are the two that they would super want We've also got uh, an Immortal Soulstone, pretty good, some 250 coins and a thousand energy. These are all pretty good. You know, even the Chaos Sword, six star mythical Chaos Sword is probably the most valuable thing in this uh, in this event in terms of rarity. It's, only, it's very difficult to get these six star mythical Chaos Swords. You only get one a month in Cintranos. So this is probably the most, like the rarest item. Not necessarily the most valuable for a lot of people, but in, in terms of like how, how much of this you can get a month, this is the one that's the hardest to get versus the rest. Then it's probably legendary books and then it's probably the coins. Now there's 100 gems and as I mentioned, there's 150 Titan event points. But the gear, there's just not enough. There's not enough gear. I said this last time they did this in the event. The odds of you being able to get something valuable from nine pieces of speed gear is almost impossible. You might get lucky, you might get one piece, but it is more than likely going to cost you more than it's worth to try and get something valuable out of this. I ran about 7,000 points worth of Finite Savage. I kept about two pieces after I rolled about 20 of them. That's kind of like the philosophy. So you're basically investing in more RNG. And the way that the Deck of Fate event works is each of these cards contains one of these guaranteed rewards. Sometimes they break it up into groups. For example, it might be groups of 20 gems across five cards. Maybe this is probably two legendary books across two cards. Behind each card lies a specific reward. You flip the card and you get that reward. If you manage to get three of the same rarity, because each card has rarity, you will get a bonus reward. Now, this is where Deck of Fates can pay off quite well. If you get a lot of green flips, you can easily pick up about a thousand gems here or there, which is quite a lot more valuable. If you think you get a hundred gems from the, the guaranteed, you can get basically, you know, two to three hundred more. Now, the odds are you're going to get probably like some brews or something like that. If you get super lucky and you get a rare or even an, an epic here. If you get an epic, you get that Eternal Soulstone, then the event pays off for itself. But there's nothing really here that's like super, super exciting. An extra legendary book is already always nice. The Eternal Soulstone is probably the best thing. But the chances of you getting this are really low because you have to get the three of the same rarity in a row. So it's a pretty straightforward thing. Each card has a rarity. You flip the card, you get a guaranteed reward. You match three rarity, you get one of these random rewards. Now, we don't really know what the odds of getting what these rewards are. It could be equal. We don't really know. Now, in terms of the summoning, tomorrow, it hasn't started yet. They've, they've brought this forward a day early for the training aspect. Tomorrow, there is a primal times two. Now, I'm sitting on about 10 primal shards, so that's going to give me some decent amount, but there's no other event that's really going to want me to pull these shards. So when you look at this, then you think, well, you're probably going to do a little bit of primal shards. If you if you play a lot of live arena, do a lot of the events, you're probably sitting on about 10 or 15 like me, or you've saved it up for these times two. You might be on 20, 25. Depends where you're really at. But you're going to have to do some training. So we're going to look at the math for the training here. We're also going to look at the math for how many shards you need. Um, if you want to go for this event. Now, I will say at 150, I expected this to be 250. Now, that does suggest that there's a Dungeon Dives tomorrow, which is probably, I would say, about 150 to 170. So there's about 100 points missing. Discussions happening in my Discord, and I think they might be right. We are due a fusion in, a couple, in about a week. Probably at the end of this Festival Titan event, a new fusion will start, probably in about seven days' time. So there's a very good probability 
that the fusion warm-up event contains a bunch of Titan points. Now, I'm not saying that for sure. You've got to, you've got to make your own risk here. Right now, I have not missed a beat. I've done 1,200 points, excluding, I think, the Fortune's Echo Fate event and the Spider Tournament that started today. 1,200 is the current total. I only need 300 points out of the remaining points. So I can skip 250 points. So I'll be honest, I'm looking at this going... I'm probably going to end up selling most of this gear because it's probably going to low, ro low roll. And to be honest, Killstroke is not that, like, it's good for PvE, but I'm not chasing it. And this Divine Speed is great, but the likelihood is I'm probably going to sell it all anyway because it's really, it has to, like, double or triple roll in speed for it to be really worth. Otherwise, I'm selling it. So if we take the gear out of it, we're looking at the rest. And we're going, okay, a couple of Legendary Books, Immortal Soul Stone, and 150 Titan Points. Now, I will summon my primals because there's no better time than a times two primal to summon primal shots. So I will flip what I get from there, but I'm not going to be chasing the deck of fates. I would rather lose the 150 points here and do a whole dungeon divers than try and do this fortune deck of fates. Now, I will obviously do some training as well, so I'll probably dip into it. If I get lucky, hopefully I can pick up some of those those points without having to go too deep. Unlike that last path I did, which I, where I had to go 38 flips. That's the problem with this event. It may have 150 points but you don't know where they are so some people might find the 150 points in the first five flips the next person might take them all 40 flips so the cost rng is really high it is basically the deck of rng the rng that you get what you want the rng that you get three in a row the rng that you get an item that rolls well so that's basically the breakdown for me now let me just do a quick math breakdown for you so summoning is pretty straightforward they haven't changed the points here it's 2000 for a sacred shard 800 for a primal 350 for a void, 130 for an ancient, and one for a mystery. Now, I always break this up into instances of 10 cards, just so you get a bit of a, a distribution of how much it's going to cost you. So you can see the whole thing is going to cost you 20 sacreds, but we're not going to be summoning sacreds, let's be honest. We might summon one or two if we feel like we're close, but really, we're not going to be using sacreds. It will be about your primal shards. If you want to do the entire deck of fates, you will need 50 primal shards, and it goes down to about 13 for 10 cards. That is the distribution here. Um, it's pretty okay from a from a, a shard per cost value, especially considering there's a times two. It's not terrible, but the the problem with primal shards is who's really swimming in primal shards unless you whale, unless you spend a lot of money because they are the most expensive shard, apart from sacreds. In terms of what you get out, they're probably more expensive as well because at least with a sacred you get a guaranteed epic. You're essentially spending potentially five dollars for a rare champion, which is a lot to ask for. Now, if you have been conservative and saved them up, then you could be in a very good situation, but Saving 50 primal shards, that's a lot to save even across three to four months, if I'm being honest. You know, you only really get one from Hydro Clash. Sometimes if you if you get the, the primal quartz, you get like 400 from the live arena. So you get like maybe five, maybe seven a, a, a month from those different types of events. That, and, and obviously there's some the, they, they throw them into different events and different endpoints. So if you've got 50 primal shards, then great, but it's very unlikely. Now let's take a look at the train. And this is the one that probably many people are going to be wondering okay, I don't have that. I have a few primal shards. How much is it going to cost me in terms of training? Well, it's pretty, I would say for what you get, expensive. Keep it in mind that you normally get a legendary book on a champion training tournament and a champion training event now, and those are far less, far less requirements than this. I think it's around about five to 6,000 energy in total for one of those events. Uh, I could be wrong. Earbad can confirm because he, he loves those training events. Now, the difference here is, of course, we do not get any dungeon diver contributions. So we basically get some points here. They did reduce the number of champion training points you get from the last champion training deck of fates, which was around about Halloween, October-ish time. That was the last time they did this. Um, it, that was about 385 for a rank six, but that was in upgrading artifacts and champion training. So it was a little bit different. There was no summoning involved. So they're trying to drive you towards the summoning essentially by reducing the points here for these upgrades the leveling is the same it is the upgrades that has gone down the way that i always do this i kind of position it as are you making champions aka making rank six champions or are you making food in terms of making rank fives in preparation for an upcoming champ rank six sort of champion training event if you don't need to upgrade a champion then you might just want to make food that's the way that i position it it does change the amount and requirements as that you need because there's a very big expense to take in a rank five fully to level 50. so we can obviously choose if we have a raid card i don't have the raid card anymore i did for the alatrian path you can enable it and disable it you can see it does have a visible impact on the amount of runs you need to do it will save you around about a thousand energy so it's quite a lot per rank six and we also have the forge 
bonus here. Right now, if you've got it, it should be all the way up to level 48. Mine is at level 48, so we're going to assume that you've got a maxed out Forge Pass if you've got that. But we can always drop it down. Let's just take it away so there's no Forge Pass bonus here. So we have a full assessment. So what that basically means, if you want to make a rank 5, you need to do about 138 runs in 12-3 and about 61 runs in 12-6 Nightmare, right? These are the two I do. The reason why it's 12-6 Nightmare, the defense numbers on those enemies are significantly lower, about 25% of any other stage. You could make an assessment to do tw Brutal 12-6, but the silver is probably worth the slight loss of XP, so it's just better to run 12-3 for silver if you're going to do it in Brutal. It's about 803 runs to make a rank 6 champion, and about 355. Now, how do we work this out? Well, we are doing partial leveling. So what we're doing is we're taking rank 3s up to level 10 before they get upgraded, rank 4s up to level 15, and rank 5s up to 21. These are the champions you will feed into the other champions to upgrade them. So we, we take those point allocations, then we work out how many we need to make one single rank 5, and it gives us a combined total. It gives us a combined XP and points total requirements for those things. So the TLDR of this is essentially, if you want to do this through training and you don't have any shards whatsoever, it's going to cost you around about 18,000 energy on the most energy efficient way. That's how much it's going to cost you to do this, which obviously is a significant amount. This is what I was saying. It's not worth it for what you get. You know, you, you basically need to, you need to have some sort of 20 primal shards to be able to see how much it's going to be like. I can change this here. So it's still going to cost you 11,000 energy to complete this deck of eight events, and you might have to go 40 deep. That's the thing you've got to make a consideration of. With your energy allocation, if you commit to trying to get the deck of fate points from the deck of fates, then you're going to have you, you're going to have to be prepared to potentially go this deep, which is a lot. This is essentially making about two rank six champions and ten um, rank five champions. It's, it's a lot of effort and energy. Now, obviously, you can mitigate this by bringing in the raid card and the forge pass. This will obviously reduce it significantly. That brings it down to about 7,000 energy. These two combined do save you a lot of energy per month, which is quite considerate. You still need to get the same amount of champions, but you get far more XP per day, which is what is the big deal about it. If you don't have the raid card enabled, we can disable this here. It's going to be about 9,000 to 10,000 energy after you summon about 20 primal shards. I would, you know, I would say summon your primal shards is times too mythical. It's probably the best opportunity. It doesn't really make much sense not to, but the training event here is pretty rough. I'm not, I'm certainly not doing it. I'm certainly not going to be going deep. I would rather skip these 150 points. I can skip 250. This is my, this is going to be part of my 250 points that I'm going to skip. So there we go, guys. That is the end of the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this deck of fate. Last time I was pretty like against this gearing because I felt like they just didn't give you enough. It needs to be almost like double the amount of gear to make this worth it. But a lot of people in those videos are like, oh, actually, no, it's really good. I got some great gear. So maybe, maybe I'm looking at it too much from an end game lens to think that the reality for me is these will never upgrade my champions because my gear is four years deep. Potentially, that's the way I'm looking at it. But maybe for sort of a mid-game player, getting access to potentially some six-star speed gear is pretty good. Maybe that's the case. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Are you going to be going for the full deck or are you just going to do what I'm going to do, which is primal summoning? I am looking forward to the times two primal. I feel like I must be close to mercy right now. I've pulled every primal shard since it's ever come out and I've not summoned a, a, a mythical champion. So I really hope that I finally get one and I would really love to get either Garrel or Crick's here, if I'm being honest, because I don't have a lockout. And we, we know for sure, based on my track record with Kaimars, there's no way that I'm getting Kaimar from these Primal Shots. I will be streaming tonight on this YouTube channel, so if you want to come hang out, uh, it's around about 8 p.m. UK time. I will be pulling my Prism Shards at them. We'll see what we get out of it. Uh, we will probably be doing some gear cleansing and prepping, because I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm like 90% certain, we are going to be getting a free regearing event starting tomorrow. I'm at 90% certain, so I do need to do some gear cleansing to clear out my inventory, to get rid of some of the storage, and prep my account ready for that. So, yep, come hang out on this YouTube channel if you want to, and thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.